Hello there, great to have your company on Kalkine TV. I'm James Preston and you're watching The Buzzing Trends. Today we'll delve into Westpac's sale of its life insurance business to Tao Dai Chi Life Australia. We'll also take a look at the expectations surrounding a share buyback by the Bank of Australia. But let's begin by taking a look at the recent acquisition of Citigroup's consumer business arm by the National Australia Bank. The National Australia Bank has revealed its plans to acquire Citigroup's consumer business arm on Monday. NAB will be paying 1.2 billion Aussie dollars for this acquisition with the aim of doubling its credit card business. NAB will gain a $12.2 billion loan book and $9 billion in deposits as part of the acquisition. The sweetener for NAB is believed to be Citigroup's existing 1 million credit card customers. What's even more interesting is that the current number of Citigroup's credit card users happens to be at its lowest threshold of the past 14 years. When the question about Citigroup's falling credit card users was asked, NAB CEO Ross McEwen said that the decline in transactions is due to COVID and assured that there is no major concerns around the Citigroup's credit card business, dispelling fears that the use of credit cards is on the way out. McEwen expressed that he is convinced about the competitiveness and strength of credit card businesses' fundamentals. That is, of course, compared to other buy now, pay later players that are in the market, such as Afterpay. It is interesting to note here that the number of transactions done by buy now, pay later companies overall is still relatively much smaller compared to the number of transactions occurring via credit card. While talking about the existential threat facing credit cards in the wake of the disruption created by digital payment service providers, McEwen said that the future of credit cards appears to be a secure enough one, with 16 million credit card users spending around $27 billion through this medium every single month. Through this acquisition, the NAB will establish itself as the key competitor with Commonwealth Bank of Australia. In another statement, CEO McEwen said that NAB has got what it takes to defend itself against competition posed by the, quote, mainly unregulated buy now, pay later companies, arguing the rules should be the same for everybody in the sense that no unfair advantage should be allowed to anyone in a free market economy. He also cited the case of Afterpay as it will grow in size and scale of operations after its recent acquisition leaving the decision on regulators about how to bring buy now, pay later players under the same regulation as credit card businesses. NAB has valued Citigroup's credit card business based on a multiple of eight times the business's $145 million net profit. The bank also expects that around 800 employees of Citigroup will shift across as part of the deal. On the back of the announcement, NAB has also indicated that it will be developing a new lending platform given Citigroup's existing platform has already exceeded its shelf life. And finally, in relation to data obtained from the acquisition, NAB plans to use this information for its no interest straight up card that was launched in September last year. Time now for a very short break on Kalkine TV. And in just a moment, we take a look at Latitude's latest acquisition on the buzzing trends. Boarding pass, please. Hi, I'm Holly Shield, and I'll be your host for Calkine TV's new show, Travel Insights. Tune in to get the latest developments in the travel and tourism space. From updates on restrictions to travel guides to info about recreation and outdoor activities. Or to guide to the financials of the sector. Though the travel industry has taken a hit from the pandemic, there is still potential left for a revival on the back of economic upturn and COVID safe travel measures. So if you want to know where the travel and tourism space is heading, dust off your passport, pack your bags and watch Travel Insights every Thursday exclusively on Calkine TV. I'll see you there. Welcome back. Great to have your company on Calkine TV. I'm James Preston with you live from Sydney for the buzzing trends. 
If you're just joining us, we're focusing on recent acquisitions in this edition of The Buzzing Trends. NAB has, of course, acquired Citigroup's consumer business, and there's also a similar story involving Latitude. On Monday, August 9, 2021, Latitude acquired Simple, an instalments and lending business for 200 million Australian dollars. Simple is a Melbourne-based personal lending fintech. It uses state-of-the-art global technologies, advanced analytics, and proprietary risk-based pricing techniques to deliver simple digital experiences to customers and brokers, fast approvals, and also same-day settlements. Simple will become the lean lending platform for all Latitude personal and automatic loans, amounting to approximately 160,000 customers and its $2.5 billion loan portfolio. Let's move on now to Westpac, who continues to morph and evolve. One of Australia's big four banks, Westpac, announced on Monday that it has agreed to sell its life insurance business, Westpac Life Insurance, to TAL Daiichi Life Insurance. Westpac Banking will also enter an exclusive strategic alliance for the next 20 years to provision for life insurance products to Westpac's Australian customers, according to its recent update. The sale price of insurance is pegged at 900 million Aussie dollars, representing 0.96 times of the financial year 2020 embedded value. In addition, the transaction includes ongoing payments to Westpac, which have not been included in the sale price. The total accounting loss on this sale transaction, however, is pegged at around 1.3 billion Australian dollars after deducting tax by the bank. The deal highlights a spree of rapid exits by Australian lenders from insurance businesses in the wake of increased regulatory scrutiny following a 2018 Royal Commission that led them to double down on the banking businesses along with a streamlining of their operations. And to wrap up today's edition of The Buzzing Trends, let's now turn our attention to another of the big four banks. Shares of Commonwealth Bank of Australia traded on a strong note on Monday on expectations of a share buyback when the bank reports its full year earnings on Wednesday. According to different brokerages, Combank may report a cash profit of over 8 billion Australian dollars, supported by a reviving retail banking subsidiary and a rebounding business banking segment. In the previous year, banks deferred billions of dollars in repayment due to the challenges posed by the coronavirus pandemic. The stock of Commonwealth Bank surged by 1.76% and hit an intraday high of $105.58 compared to the previous closing of $103.75. Shares of the Australian lender have jumped over 25% so far in 2021 and the stock is up nearly 80% from the lows of March 2020. If Combank announces a share buyback, it will join its fellow Big Four banks, Australia and New Zealand Bank, NAB, in doing so. While ANZ has also earlier launched a $1.5 billion buyback. NAB came out with a $2.5 billion Australian market buyback earlier this year. So plenty of changes for our Big Four banks. And as always, we keep you across all of it on Kalkine TV. But that'll do for this edition of The Buzzing Trends. Hope you enjoyed the program. There'll be more finance and business news coming your way shortly. I'm James Preston for Calkine TV.